Welcome back to episode three of the General Motors Holden 304 V8 engine rebuild. Is that right? It's like a tongue twister. Yeah, that's right. GM, General Motors. General Motors. Last episode, we assembled the, the rotating assembly into the block and fitted the camshaft and did the uh, cam timing. Uh, since then, we've sent the heads away to get serviced and modified. In the meantime, we've fitted the uh, JP oil pump and uh, GMB water pump supplied by Precision International. Uh, front covers on. Uh, we fitted the sump. Uh, that's all ready to go. So now we're going to move on to assembling the top end of the engine. The cylinder heads have been away at Marucci Cylinder Heads being modified. Um, we did also send them down to John's as well. He lives very close by. He did, did the, um, the rocket pedestal modification on it in his mill. So we've had to machine down these pedestals that, that house the, the rockers. Uh, I think they went down about 8.2 millimetres or somewhere about there. It's, uh, it's basically to do with the, the uh, posts that we've fitted uh, you've got to shorten them down to allow them to have the right uh, geometry. And also they're opened up from 3 8 UNC to uh, 7 16 UNC, so a, a bigger bolt. This is all to do with the extra load that the rocker has to deal with due to both the high lift camshaft and also these valve springs, which are much heavier than the original ones. So these are uh, true dual valve springs. The original engine had a, a dual set of springs, but the inner spring was like a, it's more, they call it more of a damper than a, than a dual spring. So we've had to actually machine these heads or the head shop has because these springs are larger because there's a, a true dual valve spring. So this, the outside spring has to be bigger. So they've been done. He's gone through and cleaned up the whole head. I think they've, they've sandblasted them. Um, these old heads are fine to sandblast because they don't have oil passages inside them that can get full of sand. So perfectly fine to do it. It's a good way of cleaning up an iron head. Cleans up all the schmutz out from inside these ports and that sort of thing. Uh, he has also, at my request, the short side radius on the inlet port is really bad from factory in these. Um, it's basically they've machined in to fit the valve seat, um, a hardened valve seat, and they just stuff the seat in. They don't, they don't clean off the edge of the seat. So it's, it's pretty nasty and it's a really simple job just to, to um, radius that off and it feels great now. So um, that's all done. All the valves are standard. Um, the only other modification we've done is to put positive valve st stem seals in it. Uh, these originally just have an O-ring on the on the actual valve stem and it basically just kind of attempts to divert oil so it doesn't go down into the the um, the the stem into the the guide as well so uh, he basically said I'm not doing it if you don't do it so he's machined them down and put a, a proper positive seal on it that that clips over the top of the of the guide and has a, a little uh, spring on it garter spring on it so it actually will stop oil from entering. Um, otherwise, the heads are in pretty good nick, so we're pretty stoked about that. Um, Steve at Marucci Cylinder Heads is really easy to get along with and does a great job, and he did it for us very quickly, so we appreciate that. Let's start off with some head studs. We're using a set of ARP head studs. Um, they are 7 16th from factory in the block, just bolts. So they've got 7 16th UNC in the block and then they convert over to UNF on the uh, nut side. Um, that gives it a like a smoother uh, torque when you do them up. Uh, the torque setting is 80 pound. So we uh, will do it up in three stages when we do them up, probably 40, 60, 80. Uh, we will seal the stud side into the block with this stuff because as I said, these things can be random about which, which bolt holes go through to uh, water and which don't. I've checked them out and they actually look like they all don't, but I, d I still don't trust it because there might be a, it might be half broken through on one, on uh, one hole where the machine's gone down into it. So 
this is the uh, the thing you've got to do with Holdens. Just seal them up. Got another helper here, Alan. Yeah, I had to replace the other guy that I had. Who was that? I oh, don't know, he got a better job. He's too much of a legend, I heard. No. Unreliable. This is Jackson, everyone. How are you, Jackson? Good, thanks, Ben. How are you? Good, mate. I went to school with Jackson. He's a dead set legend. Trying to be. Trying to be? You can't always win. <laughs> There's two different length um, head bolts, studs in this case. Long on the top, short on the bottom. A bit like Woody. Uh, so don't put them in the wrong place or it won't work. So how tight should I do these up, Al? Uh, just, just hand tight, just firm. Nothing um, over the top. These particular studs have shoulders on them, which is not always the case. Um, most of the Japanese stuff, you just screw them in until they bang into something. Um, sometimes you have to fill up the bottom of the hole with um, like ball bearings or in Woody's case, bits of cut off 10 mil, six mil bolt mm -hmm. to get them even because they don't have a shoulder on them. You like referring to Japanese engines all the time, hey? Well, I've got to compare them to something. Mm, that's true. What about comparing them to like an LS or something? Um, is that too much controversy there? I don't know. An LS is just like a, it's a, it's like one of these, but built by Japanese guys, which is a pretty good thing. More engineering. More care. More care. Less oil leaks. No five coats of Hylomar, Alan? Not required because it's a graphited gasket. Alan. Yo. Why is this nicknamed the Iron Lion yet there's a heap of comments calling it the plastic engine? No the... one nicknamed it the Iron Lion for a yeah, start. It's except the Iron you. Lion, bro. That was you, bro. It's the Iron Lion. If you Google Iron Lion, it comes up with a picture of a of a comes up with a picture of Bob Marley, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but why the plastic? I don't know. Some weird you know what Aussies are like for making up nicknames? Yeah, true that. Doesn't have to make sense. Mm. Does anyone know? Comment, please. Does it have to do with Tupperware? Maybe yeah. Jackson's onto it. Tupperware That's... was invented in 69, maybe. Oh. I'm totally making that up. If the Tupperware craze came in. It wasn't plastic bumpers. It, it was the new good thing. Nothing had plastic bumpers then, that's for sure. Except Volvos. Look, bro, it's the Iron Lion. You following the correct procedure, Alan? Most certainly. Heads are talked up, did it in three stages as per instructions on ARP. Uh, instruction sheet, 40, 60 and 80 foot pound or pound feet, depending on how anal you want to be about it. Foot pound. I think it's pound feet actually. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, um, one thing about these uh, VN onwards type heads on a Holden, this bolt here is right underneath the exhaust port and in the factory bolt setting, just that bolt there and the opposite one on the other side is a hex head bolt. So this with a stud in it, you may have to just cut a little relief out of the bottom of your header flange, just so it sits properly. Just something to keep in mind. It's not gonna affect the durability of the header flange or anything. You'll just probably take it in half the thickness of it. Just something to uh, consider. Don't get the wrong idea, Woody. Why's that? It's only for the motor, none for you. This is normally what Woody does on a Friday night. Just fitting up the lifters. Um, when you buy a Camtec cam, it comes with an instruction sheet that is probably the best I've ever seen. And I read it and it works heaps better when you read it. And it said, do not uh, soak the lifters, which some people 
do, and on some engines you do do that, but it instructs not to do that. It just says to soak the roller in the bottom of the lifter. So that's what we've done, and we've just used assembly lube through the rest of it. So the moral of the story is if there's an instruction thing, it comes with something that will break if you don't do it right, please read it and follow it. If they've written it, it's because that's what you need to do. Is there an instruction sheet on life, Ellen? How to? Do your best. Just quickly talk about these lifters. Um, you'll see this tie bar between the lifters. Uh, the reason for that is because unlike a normal flat tappet cam, these lifters cannot rotate because if they do, the roller wheel will face sideways and the cam will, it'll basically destroy the cam and the lifter and the whole works. Um, so this is kind of like an old, old school way of doing it with a tie bar. Um, so LS's and, and this engine um, had roller lifters in them and the reason why we've had to replace the original ones with these is because the cam lift is, ho is higher than what um, those lifters will tolerate. So we've had to go to this setup which is, it's really a lot simpler at the end of the day anyway without having that tray and that in there. Um, I'll just show you the tray and the but that's what we used to have in there and these lifters are actually very similar to LS1 if not the same apparently um, so they had that to stop them and then these tabs just pushed on it so kind of elaborate I'm not sure why they didn't just use that setup but who knows so that's the old setup that's the new setup it's a lot cleaner and easier so I got our roller rockers here um, as we mentioned before roller rockers um, or at least high strength rockers are required for large camshafts because and and valve spring heavy valve springs because there's a lot of of load transferring from upwards motion to downwards motion on the valve and the original ones will, will basically just bend in half because they're just pressed tin. So um, roller rockers are both, uh, lowers the friction because there's needle rollers inside here and also increases the strength. Uh, with these particular um, stud mounted rockers, you are required to use what's called a guide plate and that basically bolts on underneath the um, stud posts and the push rods go through the middle. And the push rods, if this tries to turn sideways, that guide plate just holds onto the push rod and stops it. Uh, seems like a little bit of a strange way of doing it, but um, that's how they do it on these old things. Uh, on the bolt-on version of, the, of these precision rockers, they aren't required because they're actually on a single shaft rather than this. Uh, but they can only operate within uh, up to 550 thou uh, cam lift if they're bolt on. So our cam lift's 590 and 600, I think. So we are we do need to use these. That thing looks like a ghost, like the ghost emoji. It does. Cool, eh? How good is it having more help, Alan? It's great. We had John, now we've got Jackson. Can't wait to get some dog grinding done. Ooh. <laughs> good job for you, Jackson. The nasty metal saw. What do you like with a mop? <laughs> Good with the hair. <laughs> with these rocker studs from Precision, uh, they give you a torque setting to torque them down to. Uh, there's two different settings, one's for alloy heads and one's for cast iron heads. Um, 45 foot pound for alloy and 55 for iron. So. We have iron heads, so 55 it is. Camtech supplied uh, push rods with our camshaft and valve springs and lifters, etc. Uh, they're 5 16th by 83 thou, that must be the orifice, and 8.15 inch long. Um, you do have to check pushrod links when you assemble the engine. Um, I assume that they have a pretty good idea of what works because they've sent us these ones. But I think I'll get John to come and have a look and 
show me how to do it uh, before we run the engine and make sure that they are correct. People assume that pushrod engines are just simple dinosaur junk, but there's actually a lot of science in the geometry involved in, in valve trains, and that's what needs to be done correctly. Um, if everything's done right, the uh, pushrod valve train is very reliable and, and usable, but when you start changing things like deck heights and things like that, this the ratios up here can change or can be unsuitable for certain rev ranges and that sort of thing so it's it's probably a little bit more more complicated than what you'd think so it's a good idea to get someone who actually knows how to specify the correct stuff before you go buying things yes do for an ancient old iron line dinosaur that doesn't look too bad, hey? They look great when they're covered up by wrinkled black tappet cover. Captain Wrinkled Black, yeah dog. How good does that look? Oh, how good's that Skid Factory sticker? It's not wrinkled red, but it's the next best thing. Someone was telling me that roll bar uh, chassis black is the one to use apparently. It's gonna be wrinkly because then you can just spurt it on and make mistakes and it doesn't matter. Hmm. You've probably noticed that these um, roller rockers are adjustable. Uh, even though this is a hydraulic cam, um, you still need to do adjustment um, with the, the roller rocker stud nut. Um, and the reason for that is that we need a slight amount of, of plunge in the actual uh, lifter for it to operate correctly. That's, so um, that amount will depend on whether you've got iron block, iron head, iron block, alloy head, or alloy head, alloy block, like an LS. Uh, and the reason for that is they have different expansion rates. So um, that's specified with the Morel lifters. And in this case, we are going 25 thou, which is not much. So the way you work out how much to preload it is via the thread pitch. So 40 thou is a, a single turn and 25 thou is a little bit more than a half a turn. So it's not super high tech measurement. You don't need degree to measure degrees or anything like that, just, just within reason. Um, and the way that these things adjust is you don't push this, this, this doesn't have an end stop on here. So these, they're kind of floating and the way that they you set the the stopper is with this grub screw so that winds in and out and allows this to screw down further or less so you wind it out screw it on with the cam with this this is on cylinder one firing so both valves are shut both cams are on the back side of the lobe this has got movement in it via the push rod. As we screw it down, you'll feel the movement go away. And it's, and it's a definite thing, you can feel it with your fingers. So after that, we then give it a half a turn. So I'll just grab a spinner, which I'm, I'm terribly prepared here. It's gonna be imperial. Five eighths, I think. Five eighths. Ha! Justin, that was your job. You missed out. Too many hands. Yep. Half a turn. Yep. Then we lock up the centre. Now these do require periodic checking. Um, this isn't a, a uh, maintenance-free valve train, even though it's a hydraulic cam. So as soon as you go with this sort of setup in a bigger cam, you do have to check it uh, periodically. So um, same process, you do it cold. Um, 
in the car is obviously not going to be as easy, but um, that's just how it is when you mess around with modern, not so modern V8s. After having a little chat with Luke at Camtech, um, I was quizzing him on why they say don't soak the lifters before fitting, um, because other people vehemently say that that's not correct. Um, and I figured that the guy to ask is probably the dude that's got a camshaft factory. Uh, and he explained to me that it's, it, it's to do, partially to do with um, this sort of preloading. If, if it's full of oil and, you, and the lifter is um, sort of hydraulically jammed after you've soaked it, this is more difficult. Um, and secondly is um, on first startup, if it's, if, it's, if it's locked up, you can actually damage the lifter on initial startup because the hydraulic, uh, like, because the lifter can't do its thing because it's because it's already locked. Um, these things should shut up within five seconds of oil pressure. They're brand new, good quality stuff. You've got a good engine with good tolerances. It, they shouldn't make any noise. If you don't do what the instructions say and they and they damage the inside of them, they'll they'll never they'll never not make noise. So um, it's one of those things do as the instructions tell you. They make lifters, you don't. The firing order of this uh, 304 is one, two, seven, eight, four, five, six, three. Some people claim that that's the, the apex firing order for the best sounding V8 ever. Apparently, according uh, to the comments section, it is anyway. And I, I believe that they actually change LSs to that firing order for some, some reason, but I think it's more to do with torsional vibrations in the crankshaft or something like that. But um, So when we're doing these lifters, we do each one on the on um, when the, they're on the back of the camshaft, so uh, firing on that cylinder. So every 90 degrees, I do the next one in the cycle. So one, two, seven. I'm on to eight now. Then what? What have we done after this? After we've done that, we can put our resplendent tappet covers on. With those? Valve covers, tappet covers. It's actually hard work, bro. <laughs> I thought it was easy. Do it again, I want to get a shot of the lifters. It's much easier when the engine's running it by itself. I want to get a shot of the Morel lifters, do it again. Oh well. I was trying to separate two mozzie coils. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> the gasket kit comes with these cork um, valley gaskets. Uh, I'm not going to use them because they don't work very well. Um, most people just silicon them up now. You can see how thick it is. That's because it, there is a gap. So it will spooge out a bit, but that won't leak and these will. Jackson's cleaning up our bolts for our inlet manifold. So we're going to throw the covers on while we wait. Oh, how good does that look? Very nice. Snug. Maybe we should have painted the heads in the block, Alan. No. Steve offered to paint the heads, but I said no, we were going to do it. I changed your mind. Yeah. Well, that wrinkled black looks sick. What do you think, Jackson? It does make a big difference. Keeps it clean, and you don't have to be a professional to put it on. Lucky. <laughs> the two guys that put it on were far from professional. <laughs> like that. We're going to fit the distributor slash crank angle sensor now. Um, this being a Bosch distributor, it has a number one mark on it, which is that little nick there. So. Hold it again. Thanks, bro. With the Haltec engine management system using a distributor, there is a process that you use to ensure that you get good timing control. And that is when you set up the distributor, so top dead center one, firing, 
this has obviously got to be facing number one in the button. What we do is we turn the uh, crank back to 20 degrees before, and that's halfway between your usable range. So 40 degrees, zero to 40 degrees is your usable timing range, um, generally speaking. And why we do that is because we want this then to be right on the um, distributor cap. So we've only got this much movement in our cap to get, we've got a very narrow button because this has got a very small cap on it. Um, some dizzies you'd probably notice have a large extended cap and that is to stop cross firing inside the distributor. So to ensure or reduce the chances of that happening, we want it to be exactly in the middle of that button on 20 degrees and then we simply lock it down and we set up the timing via the ECU. We don't move the distributor anymore. It's not like an old carbureted car. So this is, especially with this IGN 1A coil, it's gonna be super powerful. We need to ensure that that is correct. We will put a new button on it and cap and leads before it goes in the car. Did you clean these? Yeah, I got the bright shine on there and polished them up. Jackson would have done a better job, but how good do they look? When we pull them back out again and put the proper injectors in, you can actually do it properly. Is, right. that, is that when we boost the engine? No, it's when we put the proper injectors in it. So these are only going in so mud wasps don't build nests inside the engine. Oh, okay. Throwing on the Mustang throttle body. Uh, it's got no idle control motor or TPS on it at the moment. I am going to pick those up while we're in America in a week's time, a couple of weeks' time. Next week. Bring them back with me because they're not an Australian thing. Oh, hang on. When this comes out, we'll be in the States. Yes, we will. We will. Yeah. Got a couple of temperature sensors for the Haltech that we're going to screw in now. Uh, cool temperature and air temperature, which I've actually drilled a new hole for the air temperature sensor. Originally, they actually went in here on the VN to VS models, but this VT model, they actually ran an airflow meter that had a temp sensor inside the, the meter, so they haven't tapped it. Uh, I've no idea why they just put it into one port. That's kind of weird, but uh, we're not gonna do that. We've got a spot for it under here. Jackson's just skull dragged in this box of um, goodies that I've had hidden in the bat cave for a bit. This is going to be an integral part of the job. Supplies. What was in that one? Nothing. Oh. This is what we're after. Yeah, dog. <laughs> Ooh. Just be careful, it's a big teaser. Wow, there's not too many other things it could be. But which one is it? Is that the most important part of it? Just fit in the spot, mate. Jason from Muscle Car Garage Tough Mounts has supplied us with a lovely set of tough mounts for this engine to fit the car that it's going in. And we've also got a set of pacemaker four into one headers from Pacemaker, who is Jason's supplier for this sort of stuff. Um, iconic old brand in Australia for headers. They make nice stuff. So we're gonna bolt these in, ready to go. What's after engine mounting, Alan? I guess we need a transmission. Yeah. I think we've got one of those. I think we do. We'll drag it out. We can't fit these for good yet um, because obviously it's going to be a bit hard to put the engine in the car. But nobody's going to get a brand new set of headers and not pull them out of the box and 
test fit them onto their engine on the stand. That's just wrong. Instagram, bro. Project complete. No need for clearancing it, misses that head stud, all good. For those of you who follow us on social media would have seen us unpackage this box a little while ago. Um, it's a care package from Hughes. So in this big box, we have a Hughes Performance. Oh, that's heavy, or I'm just weak. Uh, Turbo 700 gearbox. So this is partnered up with a Hughes converter and it's going onto the back of our General Motors Holden 304 5 litre V8 rebuild, rebuilt engine. That's right, isn't it, Alan? That's Correct. It. It's the iron line. It's the, iron line. It's, the, it's the plastic power. Yeah. I um, still don't know why they call it the plastic. No, I don't know. It's clearly not made of plastic. Maybe we should Google it. Surely there'd be like Wouldn't a... Wouldn't they call the LS the plastic? It's got plastic manifolds and stuff. Google it and I guarantee you there'll be a thread on like boost cruising or something that'll come up From with it. From 19 tickety three. Yeah. This is the last piece of our driveline puzzle. We're almost, we've got a diff as well, but we'll, we have to get to that when we get the actual vehicle here. Um, Turbo 700 R4, yes these aren't a very good gearbox in standard form, they did have these bolted up to this engine from factory from the VN to VP I think, and then they changed to 4L60. Um, this particular box has been built by Hughes, it is very extensively modified to get rid of all the inherent problems that, the, that they have. So. Um, Yes, you can build a good one. Um, they aren't the cheapest box to build, but if you want a four-speed auto and you don't want to go so big as the 4L80E, these aren't a bad option. Um, it's all hydraulically controlled. There's, no, there's only a wiring for the lock-up clutch, so it's pretty simple. Um, it still has a speedo drive, which is great for our vehicle because it's old. Um, so it's, it's got its um, talents, um, and it will bolt straight up to that block. So. That's where it's going to go. And Hughes know what they're doing when they're building gearboxes, so that's the easy part about it. Pick up the phone, speak to Pete, he'll sort us out. For sure. So Al's mentioned the car. We haven't really told you guys what car it's going into. There's been a lot of teasers, and for those of you... I'm sure there's plenty of people that'll have a pretty good it, idea yeah. if they're Aussies. Some location. Um, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, we're going to keep it as a surprise because... We can't start it now because we're about to get on a plane to Drag Week for this year. Um, we'll be gone for a month, so we, we just ran out of time and we know how you hate getting interrupted in the middle of a build, so we're just doing the drive line. Do the engine it's first. all ready to go. When we come back, we're going to roll the car in and we're going to get stuck into it. The other thing is building cars does get complicated, I suppose, too. Things, Nothing ever things goes never go as faster as, or as to plan as you'd wish, but, um, yep, it's happening. So on the topic of Drag Week, uh, we are going to be at Hot Rod Magazine Drag Week. Is that the official term of it? Hot Rod? Sure. Um, for those of you who came along with us last year on MCM TV2 in the Cresta, we are there with Benny. We're in the Cresta. The Cresta's come back with more power and some oh, yeah. serious times to go down this year. Um, same schedule as last year. They're early in the morning and we're going to hit the road and and just get it done. So if you are gonna come see us, make sure you're there early, otherwise you're probably gonna miss us. I think Benny's got some shirts and stickers and stuff on day one. So if you are around, maybe come see us. Um, what track is it at? It's in Virginia. Virginia, yeah. Is Don coming? I think he said yeah. he's coming down. So come down and see us. It's gonna be an epic time. This is all gonna be covered on Benny's channel. So Benny's Custom Works, Make sure you're over there following that stuff, which gets us onto our next build. In the meantime, so to fill in the gaps, we've got a, an extra special surprise build um, that is partially finished already, but we're, we're going to finish it when in the next the couple States. of weeks. So that will be next week beginning. So keep an eye out for that. I'm sure you'll be very pleased. It's been a bit of a secret squirrel stuff going on a lot of so, planning a lot of work a lot of good companies come on board we too. have to get our act together and get it done so we're going to be busy over there so if you're in the states hopefully we get to see you 
If not, thanks for watching. Huge thanks to the companies that have come on board for this build. Haltech, Cantec, Precision International, Tough Mounts, Hughes Transmissions, Go Fast Bits, Pacemaker, Golby's Parts, and I'm pretty sure that would be it. Easy what about on, Harrop? Easy on the gear, Harrop. Harrop are legends too. Support these companies that support us because they're the good guys. Also like to thank uh, Jackson from your Monday 4x4. Check him out on Instagram, he's a legend. And also John for helping us with the build. Uh, it's great to get some like actual knowledge when it comes to this kind of stuff. Old cock for his dishwasher and you guys for watching right till the end of the video because that helps with us with our YouTube algorithm, watch times, etc. Thanks for watching and we'll see you when we return from Drag Week with the Iron Lion. Iron Lion bro. It's not the it's a Iron thing. Lion. It's a keyword. Yes do. It's like wiping your bum, Woody. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't, but you do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid. You need to.